Hey everybody, this is Kenny. Thanks for joining on this webinar today. We're here to talk about uh, introductory overview of Oversea Pro. Just a few uh, housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, this is about an hour session. We have some time baked in towards the end for a uh, question and answer section. But throughout the webinar, you can submit your questions in the toolbar. And I have a few colleagues here, Matt, James, and Jessica, who's going to be uh, helping answer those questions throughout the whole webinar. This webinar is being recorded, so we're going to share that as a follow-up email so you can take a look and review any items that yeah, you had questions about. So let's get started. So I wanted to show a sneak peek before we delve into the details of Oversea Pro. These are some of the screens that reflect you know, what Oversea Pro is, the different capabilities that it has, and I'm going to be delving into each one of these items. I have a live demo that we're going to do in the middle of the presentation, so we'll go through it in more detail. The agenda for the webinar, first I'm going to give you a quick overview of Oversea as a foundation for Oversea Pro and our journey and story through how we got to Oversea Pro and why that's important for you and both Snap. Third, I'm going to do a live demonstration of the Oversea Pro platform and then I'm going to share some upcoming features. We have a release coming up next Thursday where we're about to announce some really exciting features so you guys can get a, a little heads up on, on all those items and then we'll spend some time for Q&A. So most of you might be familiar with Oversea. Oversea is a remote monitoring and management platform. It's an embedded solution. Uh, we built the platform to make sure we to give our dealers the ability to remotely manage and support Snap AV connected products. So we started with a line of Wapbox products, then we got into Arachnus Networking, now we support Luma. And down here you can see that we're working on you know, our amplifiers through episode. Uh, we got our autonomic products. We got our first model uh, enabled on Oversea. And then Vigilant, the, a newly acquired company, uh, we're going to start enabling those cameras and line of NVRs as well. Uh, it's an embedded solution. And what that means is it doesn't require our integrators to you know, do any port forwarding or any VPN setups. We work with our manufacturers to embed firmware into the product that once you plug it into a network, it automatically starts talking to our cloud. It's a very, very easy setup. And you know, today we have over 100 SKUs, different models that we're supporting, and that's continuing to grow. If you're already using Oversee, the main feature sets here are just event notifications to give you status on what the product's uh, health is. You can reset the device through Oversee update firmware, change any settings, and get uh, into the activity log to understand what's happening with the device. And then on a monthly basis, we're uh, releasing new features. Um, as you've seen, Wattbox and Arachnus, over the, um, over the last two years, we've continued to add new functionality um, that's just uh, based on dealer feedback. Um, we've seen tremendous growth uh, within the last few years. Uh, we launched about two and a half years ago uh, with just Wattbox, and since then it's been growing tremendously. Today we support about uh, 290 to 300,000 devices connected to our cloud, and thousands of dealers are managing about 80,000 locations throughout the country. And the image that you see in front of you, this is just a, a small subset, actually about half or about a third of all the devices connected. But you can see it's a spread across all over the US. Uh, so we're very proud of this fact, um, and we're going to continue to support this. Another reason why I wanted to show you is we built a platform that's by design very scalable uh, so that we can continue to grow. We've been doing that at explosive growth rate in the last few years. When we stepped back to about a year, just about a year ago, we asked ourselves the question, is Oversee a complete tool for our dealers to service their clients remotely? And the answer was pretty clear. When we put ourselves in dealer shoes, it, that wasn't the case. Um, Oversee supports SnapAV and its affiliated products, but a system, a network system, doesn't only have SnapAV products. It's dependent on a reliable service provider, service coming into the home, as well as making sure it works well within the ecosystem of other connected IP products within that location. So understanding this opportunity, we went on a, a research journey. So a few trends in the home that I think we can all resonate with. One, the exploding number of devices on the network. There's more and more reliance on the network uh, for services. I was at a, at a conference, an IoT conference, and they spoke about some data that was pretty uh, interesting to hear. 
about 30% of U.S. households are already using IP video, so things like uh, Netflix and uh, you know cutting the cord to use IP-enabled video services. And there's over a hundred video service providers in the U.S. already. Um, so we'll continue to see that, and even you know security and other types of systems are all dependent on a network moving forward. Internet speeds and bandwidth is also exploding. Gigabit speeds all over the country are you know, introduced into new neighborhoods and we'll see that continue to grow. And then as we all know, IP devices, unlike the static devices of the past, continue to um, require regular maintenance. They require firmware updates, configuration changes, and as the network dynamics change, as you introduce new products, um, introduce um, a different type of software that's running on products, um, you need to continue to maintain it so it's optimized. We also did a survey with our dealers asking them, you know, out of all the service calls that you receive, rank what is uh, driving most of that volume. It was really interesting to see that the top two boxes are things that are really out of the dealer's control. So first is the devices that are already on the network that the de um, dealers didn't install, whether it's customer brought there and what already existed at the job, or issues out of dealer's control like uh, ISP outages, ISP performance, even power outages. So those two things drove a, a ton of calls. User error and education was also another one where it just continued education around how to use the product. Hey, I forgot how to use my remote. So that was uh, the top three. And then things related to whether it's install or devices that the dealers installed, much less issues. So when we look at and take a step back, the result of all this is there's just more, much more complex issues and frequent post-install support calls that dealers are now getting and is expected to support. One dealer that I had a conversation with last week said, you know, when I install any piece of the network for a client, their expectation is that I own the entire network. So any network issues I own. And I think that's an expectation that all clients have because one, they don't understand the complexity of the network and two, they, they're really relying on the uh, technology integrator that they hired. Uh, we also spent a lot of time talking to um, dealers about, you know, when you're servicing your clients, what are the biggest pain points that you have? And also ask them the question, what are your clients' pain points that maybe you can share around services? So from a dealer perspective, it was a resounding, I don't have visibility of the entire network. I don't, I don't have um, an understanding of what's going on. And there are a lot of issues that are out of my control. So even if I install a rock solid system. There's so many other uh, things that impact the performance. So therefore, when clients call me with issues, it's sometimes difficult for me to troubleshoot or understand what's going on. And it, it frankly just makes them look bad. From a client's perspective, because the systems are so complex and uh, it requires an integrator, they felt powerless. So when they have a service issue, the only action that they could take today is they just call their um, dealer and if they pick up, great, and hopefully the dealer could support them remotely or they have to roll out a truck. But oftentimes the clients felt that it's inconvenient for them to reach out to their, um, their dealer. It's late at night or on the weekend. I feel bad for calling my dealer all the time because I know my dealer also has a life. So those are the type of things that we heard from, from the clients and uh, we thought there was an opportunity there. So this is the, the slide that you saw um, just a while ago. We're moving from this model to this model with Oversea Pro. So with Oversea Pro, we're extending it beyond just Snap AV products. Number one, to give you visibility into uh, the performance of the network, the services are coming in, whether it's um, a cable or, or telco. And on the right, uh, we're extending your visibility, monitoring, and access to non-SNAP AV connected products. If it's on the network, we want to get you access to it. We want you the ability to monitor it um, and control it. And then the third piece of all this is Oversee Home. Oversee Home is a end-user facing application that we designed and built so that dealers could give some component of Oversee to their clients to self-help. They can fix things on their own if it's inconvenient for them to reach out to their dealer. And the feedback has been tremendous about how much that has offloaded calls and actually made the clients happy because they had an easy way to fix things on their own. 
Uh, we hear a common stat when we talk to our dealers that 80% of the issues that they get calls about could be resolved with a reset. So uh, we're using that as data to say, hey, Oversee Home is extremely valuable to the dealer as well as the end client. So Oversee Pro, it helps you deliver professional customer support. What's included in the SKU that we're selling, its SKU is Oversee-200-Pro. You can find it on our, our e-commerce site. It includes this hub that you see in front of you. Um, and it includes a two-year pro service activation code. So once you put the hub into the site and use a license code that it, that's in the box, you can activate a certain location to have that service for two years. Uh, we've also built some drivers uh, that work with control systems. So URC control system driver, we work with URC to build it. Control 4, we built that in-house. Um, and actually, I'll tell you in a few slides, we're actually getting rid of the Control 4 driver because we actually just built it into the hub. And I'll show you a demo of that. Um, let me jump straight into uh, the demonstration. So if you're in your Oversee app today, you get your list of customers. As you can see, some of the locations, some of the customers have been, it's now flagged as pro. So these customers have locations that have pro uh, units in, in the locations. Just to give you context, if you have a customer that doesn't have pro enabled, um, they'll just you'll just see your list of Snap AV products that you can continue to monitor and access. Um, and there's this tab, Enable Oversee Pro, and this is where you put the activation code that's um, inside the box. So once you activate it, it unlocks a number of features at this location. So let me jump to a customer that has a pro location. So instead of um, jumping, um, having the view only of the device list, your default uh, view changes to the dashboard view. So in this dashboard view, our objective was to put all the relevant information that shows you the health and status of the entire network on a single page. So up here, you can see the total number of online and offline devices. If there's any firmware updates available at the location, we're going to flag it and make sure um, you see it. Um, you're able to run speed tests, and you can run it manually. You can run it on a schedule. Um, and once you run it on a schedule, we graph it out for you over time. So the blue line here is download, and the black line here is upload. And you can see it over time. Um, you can also do a LAN test, and this test is looking at um, all the devices that the hub um, is able to ping and see on the network, and you can go and, and kind of update all the ping status across all of the devices. And what you're looking for here is any um, devices that have um, latency that's changed over time and it's gotten worse over time um, is something that you can look at. And once this is complete, you can see kind of a, a summary down below. Wireless setup is a feature that's already available today um, uh, without Oversee Pro, but I just wanted to highlight here um, the value of a wireless um, setup. So instead of going into each access point and setting up an SSID and replicating that effort across all of the access points at that location, we built this feature where you can build one network once, one SSID here, uh, security setting into this uh, passphrase, and then apply it across any number of access points at that location. Now, going further down on the dashboard, you guys might be familiar with these two tables. This is actually, top one is a table from uh, the Rackness router at this location. It's all the clients that the router sees, and you can sort it in any way, you know, by manufacturer MAC address, you still have the same functionality that, that you do on the Rackness router page, where you know you can reserve IP addresses with the click of a button. And then down here, you have the wireless client list. So in the past, if a client calls with an issue regarding wireless latency that they're facing, um, they usually call the dealer, and the dealer has to figure out, OK, which access point is that client on? But here, we kind of combined all of it. So we're pulling in the device, the wireless client list, across all the access points at that location into a single table. So I can quickly see that, hey, this iPod here has really low signal strength, and that's on the 700 AP. So once you click it, it will jump you straight into the AP to start troubleshooting.
Now, going into the device list, as you can see at the top is the same Snap AV products. Going further down, you can, as you can see, the hub is here. And when you install the hub at the location, every device that has this little icon on the left are third-party devices, IP devices, that the hub scan and is pulling into Oversee for you so that you can monitor it. So as you can see, you know, I have um, Apple TV, some Kodi player, there's some unspecified, so you can go ahead and update the name, but we'll tell you which manufacturer it is, so you can um, quickly narrow that down. So let me pick on one of those, let's say, let's pick this Lutron Caseta Bridge. When you click on one of the devices that the hub found, you can rename that device so it's relevant to you. So maybe it's a, it's a Lutron Crusader Bridge that's in the living room instead of master bed. If you want notifications from this device, um, like you would a Snap AV product, you can just turn on and off notifications here. You can also click the bell button that you saw on the previous screen. We pull in the device information that's relevant for troubleshooting. So what identifies this device, you got MAC address, IP address, uh, manufacturer information, first seen and last seen date. You can also instantly ping this device and get an update. So the hub will send a ping request to update uh, the latency on this device. So it seems like it's a uh, it's it's on the network and the signal is pretty strong. Now there are devices that have local user interfaces that hub could scan for, and once it does, it makes that available to you. So for example, this Ingenious AP. Um, it's a WAP that we have installed, it has a local user interface, the hub found it, and it's making that available through um, this little button here called Web Connect. So once I click the Web Connect and say I am remote, what's happening now is the hub is building a secure SSH tunnel directly into that device, giving you access from anywhere. Uh, as you can see up here, um, the URL is it's a, uh, our cloud URL, so you can um, this is how we get you access. You can access it from your mobile device, uh, your computer, anywhere. Um, so if it has a local interface, the hub could get you access to it. Um, there are a number of things that we did on the hub that has additional capabilities, but to show you that, I'm going to actually wait a minute to show you a different account where we're showing some new features that we're about to release next week. Wait a second there before I show you some new features. And then I want to show you Oversee Home. So Oversee Home, as I mentioned, is an end-user application that you can create and control the different uh, functionality for your clients. So in this Aaron Johnson's home location, I can set up a customized, personalized app just for him. So here on the right, I can give it to any number of users. Um, I can add a user really easily, put their email name and a temporary password and I can send an invitation which will send them an email and directions of you know, what to download uh, to get access to this functionality. And here, as you can see, is different commands. And I'm going to show you what this actually looks like on a phone. So this is my phone and this is um, just reflecting exactly what's on my phone. So I'm going to open the app called Oversee Home. So this is the app that you hand over to your clients. Click on the hamburger menu on the top left. Um, it opens up your information. The support contact down here is something that you can customize. You can put your, your integration company's name, your phone number, um, the email address that you want the customer to reach out to you at. Once you click any of those contact information, it opens up a form where um, they can submit a request to the email that I have to your dealer that he's designated and that's all within the app. And in the main screen, these blue buttons are the ones that clients can use to fix issues that they're facing. Um, and let me show you what some of that look like. So um, you can add a new command, and within a re command, let's say uh, reset, I'm just call it a box, something generic. And then I'm just click a, a, a icon that looks like you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. Um, I can pick any number of devices at that location, and as you can see, these are all Snap AV products. There's some here that you see is um, starting to we're starting to populate, which is third-party products. But let me I'm going to pick, uh, for example, um, uh, our WAP box. So if I pick the 700 chassis main WAP box, it shows it populates all of the outlets that I already know and I've already populated within Oversee, and I can pick one of these things 
and here I'm just going to pick outlet 9. It's nothing because I don't want to reset anything right now. Um, but let's say that's the outlet I want to reset, or I can decide I want to reset all the outlets, or I want to reset the box, uh, the whole entire WAP box. So after I do that, I can create a button. Um, the last part here is I can set up a delay. And this delay is so that um, when customers click the button on the app, they don't continue to click it because um, it might take a few minutes for the device to actually fall offline and come back online. So once I save it, um, you'll sh see that it showed up up here. If I just refresh the app, now you got the re reset box. So that's a generic button that I just created. And let's just run that for demo purposes. So I'm going to click that button. And it's going to ask me, do you really want it? It might take up to a few minutes. And when I click OK, it triggers on Oversee Home. And then, as you can see, um, it's a, it's a real-time um, trigger to Oversee Cloud. And the, the benefit here is that client doesn't need to know the complexity of what's behind it. All they need to know that is, hey, I got a button that fixes something. Um, so you hide that technical complexity behind the scenes. Um, when we launched this at Cedia, one of the things that um, dealers asked was, hey, oh, by the way, that's the delay that I set. So it's going to stay that way for two minutes is the, what I set. One of the things that dealers asked um, post Cedia when we launched this is, hey, it will be really nice if I can create a button that does multiple things. Uh, for example, if I say reset Wi-Fi, and it, uh, it, with one button, I can reset all the access points. That would be a great feature. Um, so the you know, consumer doesn't have to try to figure out what's going on or which one to reset. So uh, we built a multi-device um, command capability, and we rolled that out soon after Cedia. So let me uh, create one. Let's say reset Wi-Fi. And I'm going to pick a button um, that looks like Wi-Fi to the end client. And then here, I'm going to look at, I'm going to show you two different things. One. Um, if you pick a switch, uh, just like um, what you did with the WAP box, it's going to show up all the different ports on that switch that you can choose. And in this case, you can actually pick multiple different, um, different devices, different ports that you want to reset with that button. So in this case, since it's just um, access points, I want to pick the Arachnus, two Arachnus access points. Um, and then um, let's say I want to add a yet another step in between. Um, I can add another device. And when you do that, you got to determine what the timing between the two, um, uh, the two triggers are. And in this case, let's say I pick um, 210. So in this case, let's say um, just pick a, let's pick a product. There's a, there's Ingenious Web. So I can um, create multiple steps, and actually you can create up to five steps, and each step is considered uh, one Snap AV product or multiple ports on that product. So when I click and save this, reset Wi-Fi, and I'm going to refresh my Oversee Home app. Now you see that button populated in the a client's application. So you can do this even remotely. If you set up all your ports, if you name all the ports properly, you can set up Oversee Home remotely and deploy it to your customers. Hey, this is something that uh, we've added. Uh, it's a benefit to you. Um, so definitely take a look. One of the things that we thought was really important was for dealers to track who's actually using the application and what they're using it for. So we included this activity list where um, based on the user and what time they triggered it, you know exactly what's happening. So if you had a customer that's continuing to reset certain devices on the network, then either it's two, one of two things. One, it's an either uh, educational opportunity or it's there's actual real problems at that location. So that's a, a more troubleshooting information. Oh, another benefit here is um, uh, we created these macros, so you can actually run it from anywhere. So clients can run it, and if you want to test it, you can just click this button and you know test it immediately from Oversee. Now let me jump into um, a different account that has um, some additional feature sets I want to show you. So I'm jumping into the local UI of a hub. 
that has uh, one of the, it's a non-production uh, firmware, it's a beta firmware that we're testing um, that we're about to release next week. I think actually this version has a little bit more features than the one we're releasing next week, but it will give you an idea of th things that we're working on. So um, the first tool I want to show you is, um, uh, so this is the view of the local UI. As you can see, it looks very similar to Oversee. Um, our goal is to get all this data and capabilities into Oversee, but that's going to happen over time. Uh, we're doing all of our prototyping and building new features uh, within the hub local UI, and we're testing it there and getting feedback before we push it to Oversee. So first thing I want to show you is the, the ping test. So the ping test is uh, pretty neat for you to understand, you know, um, if the device is online, um, the latency of that device on the network, as well as to see what ports are, um, are available for that device. So I have, i um, going to ping one of the control four um, processors on the network. So you pick an IP address for that control four. So it recognizes the MAC address and that it's control four. Um, it quickly scanned for all the different ports open and services available for that device. And I believe this is an EA3. Um, and then it also show you the latency. It took 0.84 seconds to, uh, to ping this device. So this is one um, good way to kind of look at um, devices on the network as part of your troubleshooting um, arsenal of tools. Next one I, sh I want to show you, this is a new one that we're launching uh, next week, is a traceroute tool. So traceroute tool, um, you can pick a URL or an IP address, whether that's local or external. And when you run it, let's say against google.com, um, it's sending a packet all the way to google.com. The final destination here is Google, and that's the, the local router um, IP. So you can see that if a customer, let's say, calls you and says, hey, my Netflix is really slow, and you're paying against Netflix um, servers, um, you can see where the latency. Is that internal to the network, or is that external to the network, whether it's an ISP, or is it actually the Netflix servers itself? So um, we're going to continue to build more visuals and way to better understand um, the data that's generated here. Um, but initially, we have the raw data to show. Like this is a, a really powerful tool to understand whether the problem is internal to the network or external to the network. Um, a few things we did I want to show you um, that's going to be included in next week's release is our integration to Control 4. EA3, so that's a Control 4 processor. So in the past, you have to load a driver into the Control 4 processor so that reports back to Oversee. We're going to get rid of those drivers. If you have the hub on site and you have this firmware, it automatically pulls all of this information for you and gives you immediate access. So it gives you the status, general information about the device. Um, it scans for all the different services on that device so you can access it. So HTTP, HTTPS to web services you can access by clicking the button here. We also enabled SSH and Telnet as part of this uh, firmware release as well, which gets you access to command line prompts to get much deeper into the product. So if you click, let's say, the SSH button here, this is the command line prompt that you're now talking directly to that processor. It's a pretty powerful feature. Um, we also enabled SNMP as part of um, this release. And SNMP is a simple network uh, management protocol. Um, a lot of network switches and networking products have this enabled. And um, their standard set of information that we can pull from devices, like its name, description, um, its uptime, um, even things like the interfaces. So these are all the interfaces on uh, the networking interfaces on that Control 4 EA3, and it's showing you, you know, the bandwidth going through in and out, and whether that something is plugged in or not. If you go to the Control 4 tab here, uh, we've done some inter uh, integrations where we're able to reboot the processor. Um, this is a soft reboot through Oversee. Um, you can get information about memory and CPU usage its network information, as well as um, the nodes, the subsystems sitting behind the processor like ZigBee devices and Z-Wave devices. We'll continue to work on adding additional information about those nodes uh, so that you can use it as a troubleshooting tool.
Let me jump back. I want to show you um, a very similar capability we built for Crestron as well. So this is a Crestron processor. Um, again, same type of information status. You don't have to install any modules. There's no setup required. If you have this firmware and the hub at the site, you can get access to all the information that I'm just showing you. So again, it's looking at all the different services. Um, this processor has a Telnet capability, so you can also do command line prompts directly to the processor. Uh, if you go to the Crestron tab, you can also reboot the device as a soft reboot. There's information about the network information for that processor, the hardware information, um, and then more system information. So again, we're working on um, uh, exposing these type of information capabilities into the cloud, so you don't have to do this from the local UI. But for the short term, it's all available within the local UI of the hub. Let me show you just, um, we've done integration with like Elk Security System, um, Roku, um, and, and a few other devices um, to kind of sh uh, start flexing our muscle that, you know, we acquired House Logix a while back and, you know, um, they're experts at integrating to third-party products. So we're starting to explore more integration to third-party products. I'll show you one last example before I jump back into the presentation. So we built some um, integration to Roku where um, you can pull more information, it's device name, um, it's manu um, information about what, the, what services are available. Um, what model number it is, uh, what software version it's running on, uh, what network information. You can see all the different installed apps at, uh, for that Roku and um, you know, troubleshoot that. So as you can see, Netflix is currently active uh, app that's on that um, Roku. So more troubleshooting things. This is just kind of give you guys an idea of all the things that we're working on. Let me jump back into the presentation now. So current and upcoming features. So today um, I shared with some of these things with you. you. We have the location dashboard where we, you know, put all the networking information about that location into a single page. Um, you can monitor the ISP performance. You can scan and monitor all IP devices, and if they have a local UI, we give you access to it. We built the capability where you can also scan uh, across multiple VLANs uh, using the hub. Um, so if you have a, a network that has multiple VLANs, you can use the hub for all of it. Uh, we support even Class B networks. That's about 65,000 devices. Um, I don't think I've seen a location with that many devices, but just to make sure we have a, to, to let you know we have a reliable and robust platform. Um, and then uh, we got the ping tool as well. And Oversee Here Home, I showed you the different features. Now, so next Friday, uh, we have a lot of new features coming out. Um, and I showed you a few of them, the, the ping tool, the trace route tool, SNMP, SSH, Telnet, as well as some product integrations. Um, so look forward to that. Uh, all you need to do is a firmware update, no additional setup required, and you get access to all these capabilities. Um, I, before we end the session, I want to spend just a few minutes talking about selling this through to your clients. Because uh, this question comes up very often. I think this is where dealers struggle the most. It's not that the platform is not valuable. It's not that Oversea Pro doesn't add value to the dealer. But the biggest question is, how do I have this conversation to my client? So we designed Oversea, Oversea Pro um, and it, kind of some reason for Oversea Home as well as a service enabler for an integrator. Um, so it's a tool set. So this is one quote that I heard from a dealer speaking to him last week. They said, how do I sell uh, a tool that just helps me to be more efficient? Um, and that's a great question. If you turn around and sell Oversea Pro as it is today, um, I don't think consumers would first understand it and find it very valuable. So um, we think of it as this is an enabler for you, which helps you provide amazing services to your clients. And that's what you should be selling. The value is in your expertise and your ability to support them. Um, I think the, the key phrase that comes to mind from a client value proposition is peace of mind. They have a peace of mind that my go-to technology integrator could solve issues remotely, is proactive, is watching my system, um, and, and uh, in most cases doesn't require truck roll for him to fix issues. So I think those are the things that clients really value. Um, but it's a different type of conversation than trying to sell Oversea Pro. To help in that conversation, we created a, 
a, a, a PDF brochure. It's a trifold brochure. Um, I have screenshots at the bottom here that you can access from our website. Um, where you can plug in your company information, your contact information, and use it as your own to have the right conversation with your clients about, you know, it's really about me supporting your whole network. Um, and these are some of the tools that enable me to do that and the value of Oversee Home and how it fits within that whole story. So take a look. Um, if you have any further questions, I'm, I'm, you know, feel free to reach out to me and we can have conversations about this. But I think this is the biggest challenge is you got to figure out how to have the right communication with the dealer. Um, having done this for about four months um, and hearing from dealers some success stories, I'm going to share just one or two best practices. Um, um, this dealer who's selling a ton of services, what he's doing is he's setting the expectation up front with their clients. Um, this is the same uh, dealer that told me that, you know, if I install any part of their network, my client expects me to own everything and support them with every networking trouble. So the setting the expectation up front is in the proposal, have the plan included. It's a maintenance service plan that you're going to provide them for that year. And, um, um, you know, it, it's an opt out. So it's already included. If they really want to opt out, they have to agree that they're not going to get this type of service. They're not going to get this type of support. Um, so they have to understand that. Um, and once you have that communication that, you know, it's really like buying a car. If you buy a car, like um, there's an expected maintenance and if you want to keep the car running well and have um, keep it running optimally and really stretch out the life of the car, you know, there's an expectation that there's an ongoing maintenance cost involved. It's the same thing with an electronic system and you're the person that's providing that service. So um, I think as long as you have that conversation um, and it resonates with the deal, uh, the client, um, I think uh, you might find it more successful. Okay, I think um, that's the end of my presentation. We have about uh, 15 minutes left, and I want to open it up for any questions that you guys might have.